the weather predictions for the land. Welcome back in here to Live Now from Fox. I'm your host, Christina Evans. We are taking a listen in to NASA there. As we know, they are now getting ready to undock the Starliner from the International Space Station. This is one of those live events that we want to take you out to. Let's listen in to what they have to say. One nautical mile of visibility is also required, and the area must be clear of precipitation, thunderstorms, and lightning within an approximately 22-mile radius. A final weather check will also take place before the spacecraft's deorbit burn, which is currently scheduled for 10.17 p.m. Central, 11.17 p.m. Eastern. And following the weather briefing, the navigation and docking lights on Starliner were turned on. The LADARs were confirmed to operate and the RAL cards were enabled for departure. The LADARs or laser detection and ranging lasers create a 3D picture of the International Space Station for Starliner's computers to help the spacecraft guide itself around the ISS when it's flying close to the station. The LADAR system was developed and tested in orbit aboard the space shuttle as they docked with ISS. The RAL cards or remote analog interface unit gathers data on the status and health of critical spacecraft systems during all phases of the mission. This allows the important systems information to be stored ab aboard the spacecraft so engineers can review it once the spacecraft lands. Again, we're still listening in here, in here on Live Now from Fox to some of this live coverage of the of NASA getting ready to undock the Starliner from the International Space Station. We've been hearing now as some of those speakers are just talking briefly about what it means for this to be able to come home. So we do know that one of the big changes that NASA had to make during this undocking procedure is to get the Starliner capsule away from the ISS as fast as possible. They said if the vehicle fails, NASA doesn't want to endanger the space station and its inhabitants. This week-long crewed test flight turned into months, of course, we know, of troubleshooting and hasn't ended, of course, how it's supposed to be. We know that the, initially those two astronauts were only supposed to be there on the International Space, space Station for eight days, and it's looking like they're not going to be able to return until February of next year. So we all, of course, we know that it's been a challenging summer. This is what NASA is saying those challenges started though it, for NASA and Boeing before Starliner even left Earth in June. The spacecraft launched with helium leaks and then its thrusters ended up failing while in orbit. NASA says that after studying some of this data, the spacecraft isn't safe to bring people home, but they are still backing Boeing. So something you see here, NASA and Boeing, of course, we know this is a joint mission going back and forth, trying to figure out the best course of action. So we do know, again, the Starliner is scheduled to start undocking in just a few minutes. It's scheduled to start at 6.04 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.04 on the Pacific Coast. So if the weather cooperates, of course, we'll continue to monitor this. They don't exactly even know if it will go at the same time. We might have some more speakers now. Let's listen in. Space Station. Once uh, the undocking is complete, and Starliner has exited the approach ellipsoid that you heard Lauren describe just a moment or two ago. The uh, nine crew members on board the station, led by Commander Oleg Kononenko, will begin their sleep period. They're going to be moving into an off-duty period on Saturday. The vacancy of the forward port of Harmony will open up uh, that port for the uh, beginning of two crew rotations over the next several weeks. Next Wednesday, NASA's Don Pettit and Roscosmos cosmonauts Alec uh, Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner will be launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a two-orbit rendezvous to reach the International Space Station that will swell the station's population to 12 and uh, begin an 11-day handover with NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson and Kononenko and Nikolai Chub, who will be departing the station on September 23rd. A day later, if everything goes as planned, NASA, NASA's uh, 
Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexand uh, Alexander Gorbanov will be launching from uh, the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on the SpaceX Crew Dragon Freedom. Uh, they will uh, be a two-man crew to reach the International Space Station and provide the orbital Uber, if you will, for Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams to come home on next February with Wilmore and Williams completing what is expected to be about a 262-day mission. Meanwhile, the Crew 8 crew, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Alexander Grabenkin are in the final weeks of their mission on board the station. They are planning to depart after a five-day handover with Haig and Gorbanov. That handover will uh, lead the way for a departure on or around October 1st. The Crew 8 crew will then uh, be coming home to bring the station back to its complement of seven crew members. So with that, we're about uh, three and a half minutes away from the planned undocking of Starliner. We'll be watching carefully. It will take about 21 and a half minutes from undocking for Starliner to exit the approach ellipsoid that you heard Lauren describe a moment ago. That's that two and a half mile long by 1.2 mile wide corridor, if you will, the neighborhood of the International Space Station. So we'll be following along as Starliner begins its journey home and a landing at midnight Eastern time at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With that, uh, we'll turn it back to you, Anna, in uh, the Starliner control room. Station Houston Space are gone too for Starliner undock status. Go ahead. ISS and Starliner flight control teams remain go for an on-time undock at 22.04. Please perform 1.106 crew CST-100 approach and departure monitoring step 2.2 .2 and 2.3. Verbally call Houston when physical step is confirmed. Be advised that NDS hook motors are driving. Space-to-space -space comm may be ready. ISS crew copies ready for undock monitoring. Thank you, Rob. And we just heard some conversation between the crew on the International Space Station and the teams here in the Starliner Mission Control confirming that we are continuing to be go for an undock in just under two minutes from now at 5.04 p.m. E Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern. We are standing by for the command of the undock ATP or authority to proceed. Once the authority to proceed is issued for undocking, the NDS or NASA docking system hooks will begin to open, and there are 12 hooks that seal the surfaces between the NDS and the ISS International Docking Adapter, or IDA. Once all 12 hooks are open, springs on Starliner's docking ring will push the spacecraft away from the space station. And Flight Director Chloe Marion just asked for quiet in the room as we are approaching one minute out from Starliner undocking. As we just heard there, they're just... And we just yeah. heard confirmation that the umbilicals are retracting and hooks are beginning to drive. Again, they are just under one minute now from undocking from the International Space Station. Of course, you just heard they asked for quiet in the room, so we may not get any more audio from them as well as we're watching this. Of course, we know, again, two of those astronauts who were originally on the Starliner back when they went up, they were only supposed to go up for eight days, but it's now looking like they will not return until February. This is an unmanned docking. This is just a test, so that way they can see if they can get the Starliner back to Earth. Again, this undocking is important because there are other space ships that need to head up to the International Space Station. And quite frankly, this one is taking up one of those docking spaces. So, of course, we're still listening in as they are now approaching that time when they are going to be undocking. And there you see it now on your screen. They have officially 
undocked from the International Space Station. Interesting to see there, as you can see, it start to slowly float away from the International Space Station right here on Live Now from Fox. We've been listening in, of course, to the coverage that NASA has provided us, getting some pretty cool shots here of the International Space Station as well as the Starliner, of course. Getting, it's interesting to see even that they have these HD cameras there in space so we can bring this all to you here on Live Now from Fox, live raw and unfiltered. So as you see, it's kind of a slow process. It doesn't move very fast during this undocking procedure. But again, something very important that NASA needed to have done in conjunction with Boeing as they're going to make the next step in the Starliner's mission. So again, this, again, these issues that we saw coming from the Starliner started even before it left Earth back in June. We knew that the spacecraft launched with helium leaks and the thrusters failed once it got into orbit. And just knowing that, seeing that it's able to still undock from the International Space Station and potentially begin its descent back to Earth, we are gonna be watching for that as well. We are gonna find out again as much as we can on Starliner's return back to Earth. We know that this is a process that even the NASA astronauts don't know exactly how it's gonna go. So let's listen and see to hear if they're still talking. If not, we'll pick this back up. Starliner backs away from space station. And we are now just uh, 35 meters away from the International Space Station. Burn. We saw a good first burn. Houston, ISS, ISS thrusters enabled. Confirmation, all 27 jets have fired. Houston copies, ISS thrusters enabled. And you're seeing the light show there on your screen. And the first three of the 12 firings have completed, and there's about a 100 second pause until the fourth burn. Starliner is about 60 meters away. And flight controllers are reporting good attitude and good control. We are standing by for the fourth of the 12 burns in the series of firings as part of the breakout burn. As a reminder, the entire sequence will take about five minutes to complete. About four minutes into the sequence, Starliner will cross what is known as the or the keep out sphere. The keep out sphere is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the space station. We are 15 seconds away from the fourth burn in the series of 12. And you just saw burn four, which just completed. We're hearing good burn. All right, we've just been listening in to, of course, NASA's coverage of the Starliner exiting and leaving the International Space Station. That undocking looked to be successful at this point. Of course, it's got a long journey headed back to Earth where it will eventually land in New Mexico. Going to keep an eye on that, of course, but 